Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I will serve as your host today. Just a few points of logistics uh, before we get started. Today's short set of presentations is being recorded, so look for an email from me shortly after we're finished with a link to the sessions on demand. Uh, please do share this with others in your organization, and you can even perhaps consider using this as a lunch and learn, which we know a lot of organizations do. Due to the short nature of our webinar, we will not be fielding any questions, although I'm sure our presenters would be happy to address any questions you might have uh, offline. Uh, today's webinar is really an extension of the annual Kata Geek meetup that took place in Savannah, Georgia this past February. Um, it's because of the depth of the interaction during that Kata Geek meetup, we simply ran out of time for three of the scheduled presentations. So here we are. Uh, you now get the benefit of learning from three of the Kata practitioners as a result. Uh, before we begin our first presentation, let, let me just mention that if you are located in or around Europe, or if you happen to have affiliates there, uh, please consider attending the annual TWI and Kata Summit Europe, which takes place in June uh, 11th and 12th in beautiful Malmo, Sweden. You can learn more by visiting TWI and Kata Summit Dot EU. Well, on to today's webinar. Um, we're going to hear from three practitioners uh, in rapid succession. We'll hear first from Julie Simmons, and then Marissa Brinkman, and then Dorsey Sherman. Up first, we have Julie Simmons. Julie is an improvement kata and coaching kata coach and trainer. And I can say that Julie has been an important thought leader in the Kata community, often taking a leadership role at the annual Kata Summit. So Julie, we're excited to have you here and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let you take it from here. Thank you, Dwayne. <clears throat> I appreciate the introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm thrilled to share my thoughts on coaching, what love's got to do with coaching, and how we can achieve a fuller and more rewarding relationship with our learners. You know, when Kata first came on the scene, it was really focused on business improvement. And we were actually trying to figure out how it fit with the rapid improvement and Kaizen style of improvement that we had been making. As many of us started to play with Kata, we learned the technical piece of the learner's role and the coach's role. Now, after several years of coaching, for me, Kata is much more about the awesome relationships that I've built with the people that I just had the amazing pleasure of getting to work with. Some of the greatest time I spend is coaching. And it's so special to me because I do develop these really amazing relationships with my learners. They're strong, trust-filled bonds. And they're loving because I care deeply about my learners, who they are, what they're striving for, their skill and personal development, and finally, of course, their success. As coaches, our primary responsibility is to develop the skills and capabilities of our learners while helping them achieve extraordinary results. So yes, it's about skill development. But what I've learned is coaching is really about investing in a person and their future. I wanna tell you a story about a past interaction with a learner that really keyed me into this topic of love. I was coaching Andrea, <clears throat> who is a manager over two manufacturing plants. She was fully loaded with work, had a high amount of stress, and was constantly juggling about five balls in the air at all times. At the start of every coaching cycle, being the Kata geek that I am, I would cheerily say, hi, Andrea, how are you today? And her response back was usually, ugh, she'd sigh, and she'd say, it's going. 
Now, I could have just dove right into that coaching session and just rolled on, but instead I paused. I decided I was going to take off my coaching hat and I was going to put on my empathy hat. Andrea didn't need Kata coaching in that moment. She needed empathy, emotional support, and love. To invest in Andrea, we started our coaching cycles with this check-in where I would give her empathy and support. The lesson learned here was making sure she was both mentally and emotionally prepared for our coaching session. Andrea told me she dreaded our coaching sessions when we first started, and she said that it wasn't because she didn't like me, but it was because she just had so much going on. Once we started making that deeper connection where she felt heard and supported, that turned and she started looking forward to our daily conversation. The coach-learner relationship is built on a foundation of commitment, respect, friendship, and trust. As coaches, we're often seen as a learner's mentor and maybe even their role model. So everything we do creates a pattern the learner is going to follow. As coaches, it's up to us to decide which pattern we want to teach. If I model loving behaviors in my coaching session, that becomes the norm and pattern my learners will follow when they become coaches. Now, we'll limit the growth of our learners if we focus on only enhancing their technical skills. Instead, we should work to build relationships with our learners that emphasizes positive growth and development. I'm really clear with my learners in telling them, hey, my job is to focus on you, to see possibilities, to help you communicate clearly, be a change leader, and to learn a pattern to help you solve problems for your entire lifetime. In short, for you to be the best person you can be. Peter Drucker said it really well when he was talking about leadership, and I think this quote also applies to us as coaches. Leadership is lifting a person's vision to high sight, the raising of a person's performance to a higher standard, the building of a personality beyond its normal limitations. This is where I place my emphasis and focus when working with Andrea because she just needed to be heard and supported in those moments. Without truly caring for Andrea, I might not have been open to really hearing what she was saying in her strained responses to me. The approach I took with Andrea was to be more empathetic and less focused on just rolling through our coaching sessions. Having empathy and learning how to be empathetic to our learners is one key to creating a strong and loving bond. Empathy is the ability to sense and recognize the feelings and emotions of others. Empathy means you have to put yourself in your learner's shoes and to help them by being aware of and sensitive to their feelings and emotions. To create that empathetic connection with your learner, start by listening with purpose. That means facing your learner, looking Thank them you. in the eye. Really? Julie? Yes? Julie, could I interrupt for just one second? Um, we're getting reports that there's some background noise. Now, I know this is really difficult to troubleshoot while you present, but I just wanted to mention it in case there's something obvious that you might be able to do. It sounds like a little bit of static. There's uh, the not. It's, it's total silence on my end. Yeah, that, I, I understand. So it, if we can still hear you. I just wanted to mention uh, that we've gotten a few reports. Okay, I'm sorry about that, everyone. I'm not sure. Audio is one of those technical things. It sure is. Just, just go ahead and continue. Okay. Uh, so I was talking about how we create that empathetic connection with our learners. And we start by listening with purpose, facing them, looking them in the eye, really taking in what they're saying, and giving them your full 100% attention. Acknowledge their situation and how that makes them feel. 
show understanding and compassion. To really show empathy, we as coaches, we have to open ourselves up emotionally. And this can be awkward and uncomfortable at first, but if you keep practicing opening yourself up to your learner, you will find that your heart begins to grow as that connection deepens. Opening ourselves up and showing we really care will help achieve that full relationship we're starting to create. So how can you start to build that holistic relationship that's full of love and empathy? Here are four questions to reflect on prior to every coaching cycle. I suggest your prep pattern is to give thoughtful consideration to these questions, making sure you are as prepared to coach as you expect your learners to be for the coaching session. First question, what is your learner personally striving to achieve? Do you know what's important to them and what they're striving for? I can tell you it's more than just achieving the result of their kata. For example, are they working on building their confidence to speak in front of a group, improve their communication skills, or maybe learn to work more collaboratively? Stop and just ask your learner. This is a really fun conversation because you're talking about what's important to them. The second question, what current gap in your learner's skills are you both working on? Understanding this and thinking about it prior to your coaching cycle will help you as their coach focus on building their skills. Question three, I want you to ask yourself, what is really special about this person, your learner? Do you appreciate how they're quick to smile or how they show up to every coaching session on time and prepared, even though you know they have tons of responsibility and stress in their work life? You'll know you thought of your learner's special attributes when you smile when you think about it. Finally, prepare yourself to show love during your coaching cycle. Think about and prepare to do one thing to show love in each and every coaching session. Love is a verb, it's an action word. Make sure you show how much you care through your actions. Remember, your coach-learner relationship is really special. Go deeper than just focusing on growing technical skills. Strive for a big relationship that's full of love and show your learner you really care. Thanks so much for listening in and for your time. Sorry about the audio problem. I hope you were still able to hear what you wanted to hear today. Appreciate it. My name is Marissa Brinkman. As Dwayne had said earlier, um, I work for Fishback Financial Corporation, which is a holding company for two bank charters, First Bank and Trust and First Bank and Trust Sioux Falls. I work within centralized banking operations. Um, I've been with the company for almost 11 years. My background is really in banking operations and not continuous improvement. Um, and about five months ago, I decided to take an opportunity to build a new role for the company, the continuous improvement manager. So our director of banking operations, Ryan Schiller, who is my manager and mentor, started us on our continuous improvement journey a few years ago as a sort of grassroots effort within the company. And last year, our CEO gave Ryan approval to hire an FTE dedicated to helping us foster and expand continuous improvement practice and thinking within our company. Um, we're very much in our infancy with continuous improvement and practicing Toyota Kata. And what I have to share with you today is not an underdog story of a group of bankers who tried Kata for the first time and just nailed it. <laughs> My story is our first ever experiment with practicing the Toyota Kata and sharing what we learned. So it was quite simple. We became, you know, experts at what we were supposed to do by watching a YouTube video and reading up a bit on Mike Rother. And so here was our experiment, or should I say uh, our ex experiment within an experiment. There were two teams with 10 minutes to get an egg in a glass of water to float. 
I took some inspiration from the Apollo 13 movie and gave everyone a box of random supplies to help them experiment their way to the target. I assigned roles of coach, doer, or learner. I didn't know at the time they were called learners and a recorder. So teams were tasked with getting their egg to float while going through the kata coaching questions. Now keep in mind, we had basically no idea what we were doing, and yet as I planned this experiment out, I thought, man, I think we are really going to crush this. We know exactly what we need to do. YouTube explained it very well to us. So what I thought was going to happen was we were going to calmly go through the questions like we learned, and even if they didn't figure out how to make the egg float in 10 minutes, they would have at least gone through a few experiment cycles. So what actually happened, first and foremost, thankfully, this beautiful group of humans were great sports and did not hurt me at the end of this experiment. Um, but second, we did not get the eggs to float, which I kind of expected that. But we also did not follow the coaching card and stick to the improvement kata. People were throwing out random solutions and jumping right into doing, and it was pretty much chaos. And here I am, the observer, having made them go through this experiment, and it hit me that this is going to be really hard for us to change. Despite the simplicity of that little card, the practice of developing the new habit is going to take us some time. So this is what we learned. Um, one thing we learned is that when we intensified the environment, it made it easy to slip back into the old habit of just tossing out solutions. So we only gave teams 10 minutes and we kind of set it up competitively. So that, that made it hard to not just default back. Um, it was easy to abandon your role as coach or learner, and that was also a little bit disastrous for us. And we didn't actually have a clear enough target condition because apparently a floating egg can mean many different things to different people. Um, and there was a lack of experience as using a coaching card was new to all the participants along with going through the exercise. And of course, we still have lots to learn and need more practice. So what was really powerful was at the end of all that chaos, we stood in a circle and reflected on what we experienced. And I think it was in that reflection that we actually came together and better understood what it was, uh, what it is we want to be doing. So uh, what's next for us, our next step is to continue to experiment and practice. We aren't really practicing in the classroom now, but practicing on real improvement efforts within the company. Of course, trying to minimize our blast radius until we can refine our new habit a bit. Um, and so I just have one final thought that I wanna share as a note of appreciation for this opportunity and for this continuous improvement community. After attending KataCon 5, Steve Medlin took pity on my poor soul and has been acting as a coach for me as I try to press towards a higher competency as a learner and coach. And in fact, several people, most of whom are consultants and should probably be charging me for every question that I ask them, have been so gracious and supportive, welcoming me into this new community, community sharing their knowledge and guidance. So I just want to uh, give a shout out. So thank you, Dorsey, um, who you get to hear from next, and Hugh and Oscar and Steve, and most recently, Panos, who I started bothering on LinkedIn. I'm so thankful for your generosity and sharing your knowledge and being part of something really great for our company. And thank you, Dwayne, for giving me the chance to share my story today and everyone who dialed in to listen. <laughs> Marissa, I think you summed up well exactly what... Uh... Katakan is all about. <laughs> um, certainly a community that's uh, willing to help and share. So thank you for that. And thank you too for your patience uh, as we had some audio difficulties there transitioning to you. No problem. So next up, we do have uh, Dorsey Sherman. Uh, I met Dorsey for the first time when she was a presenter at Katakan 4, I think it was Dorsey, down in Atlanta. Is that right, yes. Dorsey? Yes. Yeah. And uh, so Dorsey was with us again this past year, um, but this time in a different role. Uh, Dorsey is now uh, independently uh, consulting and coaching other organizations. 
uh, from kind of where they are now to where they want and need to be. So Dorsey, I really appreciate you being here with us and I'll go ahead and let you take it away. Great, thanks, Dwayne. And uh, hi to everybody and, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, so today I'm gonna talk about my experience and, and kind of my observation of leadership development, sort of typical leadership development and compare what I think is, is a common approach to two sort of superior alternatives. So I've, I've drawn out here sort of a year in the life of a new leader. And this is sort of a compilation of personal experience plus colleagues and, and what I understand from other organizations and other places I've worked. So day zero, congrats, you're a leader. And we know you're a leader because you have a laptop and an office. And from there, your training consists of an overview of human resources and the mandatory meetings you need to attend, how to submit a capital request, how to administer the employee engagement survey and make sure everybody gets a Hershey bar at the end, how to find your customer satisfaction data and, and how to sign off on payroll. From there, leadership development transitions quarterly to a room with anywhere from two to 500 people and topics run the gamut from change management, active listening, improv for leaders, uh, lean, team dynamics, crucial conversations, the Disney way, the Ritz Carlton way, conflict resolution, the Quint Studer way, how to improve a culture, how to deploy a strategy, just to name a few. And at the end of the year, is an opportunity for a performance evaluation um, with your boss who discusses areas for personal improvement and the goals or suggestions are written down and given as action items like um, communication skills or executive presence. And then that really repeats with kind of the quarterly meetings happening and a yearly, a yearly action plan. So um, for me, I had that experience and, and didn't necessarily think anything of it. And, saw it as, as positive. And then I started practicing Toyota Kata and my evolution as a leader and also for those around me was, was different. Not necessarily in a, in a perfect year, um, um, but goes something like this. So day zero is I'm learning for the first time as a new learner, um, I'm interested. And then by day 30, um, I get it and the, the Dunning-Kruger effect kicks in where I have a little bit of experience but a lot of confidence and I say let's do it everywhere and I'm a coach and but I still have this habit of telling others what to do and so we say things like that experiment won't work try, try this one instead but for me I kept practicing and reading and and reaching out to coaching resources and, and a light bulb hit where it's it's about the learner it's not about being right. It's not about the storyboard being right. Uh, the question is whether this person I am coaching is learning scientific thinking. And after I realized I had to focus on the learner, I also understood partly through the second coaching card, which um, I learned about for the first time at Katacon 4 a year ago, that I could experiment on myself. What do I need to do differently to help this learner learn how to think and work scientifically. And for me, this is the fundamental question in the development of a leader. What do I need to do differently? How do I need to be more effective to support this person I'm coaching and leading? And I wasn't the only one who had this realization. This is a quote from one senior leader who said, until they started practicing Toyota Kata, no one had ever talked about um, developing as a leader. And she didn't consider how to develop her team, but now really wants to be known for that. So that takes me to another perspective on leadership development that is comparative and, and centered around emotional intelligence and really the premise that true and lasting change only comes from internal motivation combined with practice and feedback from a coach. And for me, this is um, Richard Boyata's theory of self-directed learning. And it kind of starts where that second coaching card leave off, leaves off. So the, the second coaching card says, what is the target for my learner? What does my learner need? But this one says, what is the target for myself? Who do I want to be? What are my values? Not just as a leader, not as 
what I ought to be, not as, you know, an ought self, but as personally, you know, what's most important to you. And so day zero doesn't start with what's wrong or an action plan or what you need to fix. It doesn't come from a lecture, but really from your ideal self, the, the rallying cry, which is, of course, the challenge, followed by an understanding of your real self followed by a learning agenda and followed by practice. And as you can see um, by the improvement kata pattern below, this beautifully mirrors that same pattern of, of starting with this challenge, going to your current condition, and then experimenting through obstacles to hit short-term targets. And these are two powerful and complementary alternatives to um, sort of a typical leadership development experience and and I'm working to apply them both with myself and and with others in the coming years. Well, thank you very much. Dorsey, thanks so much for the presentation and uh, thanks for you know, your flexibility during the Kata Geek meetup and then uh, coming back into our presentation here online. Um, just a couple of uh, points of wrap up. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Julie, Marissa, and Dorsey, and I'd like to thank everyone online for your uh, comments, letting us know that there were a couple audio problems. Um, we did recognize that and apologize. Um, so thanks again to our three presenters. Um, I would love to meet you all in uh, Malmo, Sweden this June. Uh, if you can't make it, or perhaps uh, somebody on your team could, again, if you have any affiliates in Europe, please let them know about the TWI and Kata Summit taking place in Europe. I do have a discount code for you uh, if you're interested in uh, a 10% discount. Um, send me an email and let me know that you're interested. I gladly forward you the information on how to, to sign up with that discount code. You can learn more about the summit again at twiandkatasummit.eu. And feel free to contact me at Dwayne at leanfrontiers.com. That's D W A Y N E at leanfrontiers.com. Thanks again for the presenters. Thanks for everyone for participating in today's session. Look for an email from me uh, within the next hour with a link to today's recording. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. <laughs>